Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. In this video, we are going to talk about selection sort. And in the last two videos, we have seen bubble sort and the insertion sort. And we will see that how exactly the algorithm works for the selection sort and how exactly it is different from a bubble sort. We will try to see the time complexity with one practical example we will see. And we will try to sort one array with the selection sort algorithm. And we will do the exactly same thing in the form of Java coding also. And then we will see that the selection sort time complexity along with different test cases also. Uh, we will try to solve it here. So let's see selection sort, how to explain at a time of interview, very important interview question for the sorting algorithm point of view. Let's see how to do this. So now you can see in my dashboard that uh, the selection sort, let's see here, I'm having some elements in the array. Let's see eight. Let me take this eight, then two, then four, then one, and then three, right? And then this is the array that uh, we are having it. And then um, first we have to do, we have to do some marking. But before that, let's see, this is zero, one, then two, then this is three, and this is fourth index. So what we have to do, we have to touch the first element. Okay, so let's do this marking. This is my first element. And then from one to four, or you can say from first index to the last index, we have to find out the minimum element in the array. So minimum element in the array is one here, you can see, right? And then we have to compare first with minimum. It means if first is greater than minimum, then only you have to swap. That is the condition and that's it. So what exactly we have to do, eight will be swapped with one. So I'm writing eight is greater than one. Yes, condition is satisfied. So let's swap. So here I'm writing, let's see, this is one, then two, then four, then eight, then three here. So this is the outcome after the first swap. Okay. This is the thing. So can I say that this one is a sorted element? Again, I'm dividing into two parts and this will become the unsorted element. Right. So again, in the unsorted element, we have to find out the first element. So let's see, this is the first element. And this is also minimum element, right? In the unsorted, because sorted, we don't need to touch. In the unsorted, first and minimum, both are two here. So I'm going to check two is greater than two. No condition is not satisfied. So no need to swap. So what is the final thing? We are getting same thing. One, two, four, eight, and three. So let's create this array one more time here and we will try to see the same thing once again here let's see so can i say that this time one and two got the sorted array right in the is a part of the sorted array and four eight three these are my unsorted elements are there from here to here again in the unsorted what we have to do we have to find out the minimum one so can i say this is the minimum one and then the first element is this. So I'm marking it once again. This is my first element. Checking first element is greater than minimum. It means four is greater than three. Yes, condition is satisfied. Then we have to swap. So what will be the outcome? The outcome will be one, then two. Then I'm writing four and three will be swapped. So three and then eight and then four will reach over here. Right? We are almost there. You can see that array is getting sorted now not fully sorted okay now can i say that the sorted element these are the sorted elements and last two are the unsorted elements right again in the unsorted what we have to do same thing we have to do that this is the minimum one and this guy is the first element the eight is the first element again check first is greater than minimum it means eight is greater than four condition is satisfied swap it once again so let's do that. So here I'm writing once again, one, then two, then three, then uh, four, and then eight here. And now what you see, this is the sorted array. All the elements are sorted now. So can I say this is my sorted array? So from where we actually started, we actually started eight, two, four, one, three. From here, we actually started. This is my unsorted array. Now, finally, we have sorted all the elements here. So the condition is we have to check the condition first element and the minimum element in the unsorted array. Again, first element, minimum element. You can say that first element, minimum element, first element, minimum element. If it is first element is greater than minimum, then only we have to swap it. Otherwise, we don't need to do that. That's it. And the simplest algorithm that we have written, I mean, simplest 
uh, mechanism that we have written here. What will be the time complexity? See this. First of all, that we have to find out number of iterations. We have to keep swapping number of times. And then we have to find out the minimum element also in the array n number of times. So that will be giving you O n square time complexity, right? So this will be big O of O n square in the worst case also. In fact, in the average case also, it will be giving you O n square because we have to keep finding the minimum element. And then in the best case also, because we have to keep finding the minimum element and then we have to keep iterate. So it will give you n square in the best case also. That's what it is very, very expensive sorting algorithm, which is very much time taking as compared to the others one, because in bubble sort, what exactly we were doing in bubble sort, we were just checking the next element. Then we are checking uh, these two elements. Then we are checking these two elements like that. We are not checking the first, we have to find out the minimum element. Then we have to keep checking with the first element in the selection sort. Although the space complexity is uh, nothing here because it's a constant one. We are not maintaining any space or extra variable here, but again, uh, with the time complexity for the larger array, it will be very, very expensive. So that's what is one of the, I would say the poor performance sorting algorithm among all the, uh, sorting algorithms. So there. Okay, so let's see how to write the Java code for that. And then we will see a practical uh, test cases also that how exactly we can write the code in Java. So let's see, I have this uh, array A2413, the same example that I'm taking. And then we have to apply the logic. So I'm writing one method here, selection sort and passing the array here. So what we have to do that, uh, let's start a for loop here. And then I'm going to iterate this particular array. Let's see with the integer i is equal to zero and i is up to array dot length and then i plus plus keep increasing the value of i. Okay. And then after that, what we have to do here, uh, I'm going to maintain, let's see one index that is minimum index, which is equal to, let's see initially i, right? Because uh, what we have to do, because we have to find out the minimum element in the array from here to here because the first element is fixed here and then we are assuming that okay from two to three we have to find out the minimum array it means again we have to iterate from two to three or two to the last element so again we have to write another for loop to find out the minimum element in the array so i'm writing let's say integer j is equal to and then from where we have to start because we have to leave eight so there is no point of starting from j equal to i so I'm saying i plus one because we have to start after eight, right? We have to start from here from two to three. So here I'm writing j is equal to i plus one. Okay. And then j less than uh, array dot length and then keep increasing the value of j by one. Then we have to put uh, one condition here that if this array of uh, j, right? We have to put a condition that if array of j is less than what array of whatever the minimum index that we have written that is equal to i initially right so array of j is array of minimum index then in that case what we have to do then in that case we have to find out the lowest element so i'll do one thing this minimum index is equal to what is equal to j over here like this so this algorithm is doing what we are actually uh, searching the lowest index element here. Okay. This is what we are doing. So the second for loop we are doing searching for the lowest element. And then one, the lowest element that we have found in the minimum index. So logic is simple. J is equal to I plus one up to the length of the array. And then we are checking that the next element, it means we are keep checking that J is equal to what I plus one, and then checking with the array of index that is, uh, this one is the lowest one. No. Then again, we are checking uh, the next one. Four is uh, uh, with two, one with four and three with one. So this logic is just to find out the minimum element in the array. And then once the second for loop is uh, done, we just need to do what we just need to. Let's say I'm maintaining one. That is the, I would say the lowest number. I can say that that will be the lowest number or the smallest number is equal to what? It means the smallest number is available in this particular index after the second for loop. So here I'm writing that. Okay. Yeah. Here I'm going to store. It. And once we find out, let's say I have found that. Okay. One is available is the lowest number. Then we have to swap it with eight. 
the first element in the array so what we should i do it means then we have to swap it with what the whatever the uh, minimum index that we have written here we have to swap it with that so i'm just going to write is equal to array of i here it means whatever the array of i i is equal to 0 8 will be given to one's position and first will be given to eighth position we have to swap it like this and then again i'm writing the simple swapping algorithm array of i which is equal to the lowest number that we have captured the smallest number that we have captured here okay and after that that's it so this is a simple logic that we have to apply and let's see this is really uh working or not so once we get this what i'll do here after this particular for loop I'm just going to uh, system dot out dot print Allen and then I'm going to write arrays dot uh, to string method to print this particular array. Okay, so let's write arrays dot uh, to string method and I'm printing the array values and uh, I'll do one thing from the main method. I'm going to call this particular method. So let's call selection sort and uh, I'm passing this array here. So let's see what is the output of this program. So I'm going to run as Java application and the console output is coming one two three four eight it means yes the array is completely sorted here perfect okay let's add some more values let's see i'm passing some uh, duplicate values and three four four and then five and then six and then again eight some of the duplicate values i'm passing let's see it's sorting or not so yes one one two three three four five six eight eight uh triple four which is fine let's say i'm passing only one single value eight then in that case array of length is 8 so you can just write another check here that if array length is is equal to equal to 1 then just return the same array that check also we can write it here so let's write one thing that if that array dot uh this particular dot length which is equal to equal to 1 and then do what you just simple say that uh, system dot or print allen print the same array once again so i'm writing let's see uh arrays dot a two string method and then print the same array and then you don't need to return anything so i'm simple writing return that's it okay so let's quickly check that with eight are we passing yeah just simple passing eight and then it's giving me eight over here only that's it now let's add some more uh, values so let's see i'm adding uh eight then i'm passing minus one then i'm passing zero zero two times and then passing minus nine ninety nine then minus 77 then minus 55 then 909 and then one then comma two let's see is it really sorting this array or not so yes you can see that yes it's sorting this particular array if you have a duplicate elements also it's absolutely working fine here so here you can see that's a simple program that we have to write just write some corner cases if length is equal to equal to one otherwise we just need to find out the first minimum element so here we just need to find the minimum number and then and uh, we just need to replace the minimum number with the first index this is what we are doing it so this will be your uh, swap and uh, this will be the searching the lowest index element here that's it